Welcome back to the homestead. I'm sorry, it has been a while, but I'm right in the middle of this massive project. I'm remodeling a house. <laughs> yeah, we don't do little stuff here at the homestead. We just go big and crazy. But today it's going to be not about the greenhouse. It's going to be the ultimate rabbit colony video. So I'm gonna give you a full rundown of my rabbit colony. Now, why do you want to watch this video? If you're into rabbits, you want to watch it because I'm going to tell you several years worth of mistakes so you don't have to make it. <laughs> so I'm going to show you why our colony works. And one of the highlights is I want to introduce to you um, how to make an insulated nest box. And I'm going to explain why that's a big deal. So I told you it's all the way about the um, rabbit colonies, that's all we're doing. But there's a reason I'm coming into the greenhouse. So if you're not familiar with the homestead, we highlight a year round off grid Wallapini greenhouse. We went a full year through heat and through the cold without electricity. So check out that those videos in the playlist. But the reason I'm coming in here is I'm trying to find some lettuce because I got to bait out the rabbits. So you can just see, oh, you know what? I'm gonna get this stuff. I think it's called, oh, so you can see all the rabbits, sorry. I have about 12 minutes of light. <laughs> and so I'm trying to beat the clock right now. My phone battery life is also dying. And so I'm using my phone and then I gotta go over to McKenna's phone. So super busy, but you know what? This is what you get. We're not polished, we make mistakes. We tell you our mistakes. And uh, that's what we're doing. So we're gonna give this nasty calendula, I think is what it's called. Uh, sorry if I offended you vegetarians out there. All the love, I just don't like it. It tastes like rat poison and dandelions. Got together and had a baby. Okay, so we're going to the rabbits right now. All right, McKenna, come video me. Okay, so. <clears throat> As we start the video, first of all, this isn't calendula. <laughs> I know I said it was. Becca just told me, by the way, my videographer is Mrs. Homestead. Uh, this is actually just lettuce that we let bolt. We're gonna collect some seeds, but we're using this today to lure the rabbits out. So come with us as we show our design. So the first thing I wanted to tell you is that we built this originally for our hogs and it works good because it's sturdy on the outside. So you can't have, you don't want predators to come in we also went and wrapped the top with wire because when we first started, we were having issues with babies that were that were dying. And we thought that there was cats and hawks and we didn't know what. I actually don't think it was that at this point. I think it was an unhappy colony. So we're gonna tell you a little bit more about that. But come on, let's see the rabbits first of all. So the rabbits, don't like me as much as they like Becca, but if I have a little bit of food, they'll come play. <laughs> so as you can see here, we have about, I think six mothers and all of these other ones are fryers that are ready to be sold to the meat truck. Um, you want to raise them up uh, right about, you know, five to six pounds. And so the way we have our colony set up, again, it was an old hog run we, we actually went and lined the bottom of it. If I were to really be dedicated, I would, I would scurry down and show you the floor. The you whole... can see it over here because I was digging. Do you want to show? Oh, it? come over here. The whole floor, well, I don't want to so dig there's in a, it. Well, there's a shovel right there and it's just right there. It okay. was, 
I was getting some for the grow beds. Okay, you see that? So the whole floor is that wire mesh. And we did that for specific reasons because when we first started out, we had heard some people have success not putting a floor. They, they, they just had dirt floors and they would let the rabbits burrow through and, and do their burrows in the actual raw dirt, like in mother nature, makes sense. But as we did that, we had so many tunnels collapse on so many babies and so much death and destruction. It was chaos. So we decided to go away from that. And I'm glad that we did. The one thing I will say, part of that was not all uh, the rabbit's fault and the earth's fault for caving in. We had a couple of bucks, breeding bucks, and we had some wild mamas. So we just had unhappiness and chaos. And I think that that's, so maybe you could get by without the, the metal on the floor. Well, but and then they started escaping. Oh yeah, we did have a few that we, that they were escaping. They had burrows so far that we couldn't even tell. So I think I think when all said and done, I think it was worth the expense and the effort of of lining the bottom with wire. Um, I did all the wire a certain way so that when we want to come and harvest this this ground for our greenhouse, we can just come with a flat shovel and it's fairly easy to get this really awesome mulch and take it out to the garden. Well, in our case, the greenhouse. So that's one of the one of the main things that I, I would recommend. The other thing is I mentioned we only have one buck down here. I can't tell you which one he is. Mm, he doesn't have I the think big goiter. I think he's that one, right? There. He could be that one. But so even though we have one buck and the six or seven does, we learned by sad experience a few years ago when it was right at this time when they start breeding and our buck just died and so it, it was during the lockdowns and and everyone was like hyperventilating and scared and you couldn't find like buck rabbits it was so tough and so we lost like three months of peak breeding productivity because we did not have a spare buck so the one thing that we have done even though we like the colony is we have a second buck that we leave up in a cage I like the colony because it's a little easier to maintain in my opinion. Serious rabbit growers, they're all cages. Go ahead and put the hate in the comments. Cages is the only way, it's fine. <laughs> but for us- Well, we the, were so the, sad because they were hot and I think they like going down into the burrows. That was that was why we did it, right? Yeah, so well, and, and E, so I'll, I'll, get, mm -hmm. I'll get into some of that too. So, um, Sorry, where, what was my train oh, of thought? Oh, I digressed you. I'm so no, sorry. it's sorry. I'm like battling the sun here. So, so one of the things that we, um, like we wanted to have more than a couple of breeding does. And to go through a winter, in my opinion, with, you know, seven or eight or nine cages that you happen to do individual water to, that seemed more maintenance. So the way that we have it set up over here now is we just we just use these bird feeders so you can get you know like probably four gallons of water here in the winter time we actually put the heated bases on it and so in theory it's a lot easier to water so so that's that's good and then the other thing um over here is for feed i just got one of our corrugated pipes we just cut into it and we just we just put their feed in here Something else that we do that I think is very beneficial to the rabbits. So we, we save our long clippings. We actually have leftover long clippings from last year that we have dried and in our little granary. So every, every day we give them pretty much an unlimited supply of dried long clippings. So we limit the food so they don't get too fat, but they have constant- um, The pellets, you mean? Yeah, yeah, the pellets but they have constant access to the grasses. And so that also helps to make for great mulch because you have all of that. Okay, so Becca had mentioned the other thing that we didn't like, and that leads into, I think the highlight of this video is our insulated grow boxes. So one of the things that we noticed last 
dude, two years ago, we had we had a couple of does and we had our buck in here, and it was July, and it was blasted hot, and they were just in here just like huffing, just you know, and we're just like this is like animal cruelty, and so we we decided that that's when we decided to just try to make fully the burrow system work because before we were going to have two breeding does and the buck they were going to make lots of babies and then we're going to put the babies down here and the babies would grow up and then get sent to the meat truck or to the freezer okay but then we realized how hot it was so down here the one thing that the heat does for the males is it actually makes them go sterile if they get too hot there's no babies coming because the male it just zaps them and so we have the system down here, it's naturally cooler. They have access to go in the shade, out of the shade, in the boxes, out of the boxes. But in addition, we have, we have these setups where we have insulated nest boxes or a place where they can go to get cool or to get warm, depending on the season. So we just have um, upside down um, barrels from, like these are for trees. So what is that? Like a five a gallon growing pot. Growing yeah. Pot. yeah. And so, well, I think that's a five gallon. That was huge. Yeah. So this one might be more like a 10 or 20. So what we did is we, we cut a hole, we turned them upside down oh, that's blocked in and they're, they're setting all the way on the, on the metal. So they can come inside of here, but then it goes down to another pipe. So they come in on one side, they can go down to the bottom and then they have another uh, hole that, that leads pipe to like one this. of to one of these size. corrugated pipes. And so from there, they go through through that pipe into the insulated uh, grow box, uh, nest box. So come with me and I'll show you that. So that is where sometimes in the heat, we see our rabbits actually hanging out there, even when they don't have babies. But part of the main reason is um is so that their, their babies can be insulated from the heat or in the winter time uh insulated from the cold so i just built a little hutch <laughs> and put some insulation on it because i want this it's already down in the ground so it's already going to be at a natural temperature i want to preserve that so i just put some foam board which i think is about an r5 to r7 depending on which type of foam you get but the brilliant idea because I've seen people have burrow systems in totes. We just got some cheap Walmart uh, coolers. I think they were like, at the time, I'm sure right now with inflation that's going down, they're probably, you know, twice as much as I paid for them. I think I paid like 10 bucks, uh, 10 bucks a cooler. So in, in the coolers, let's show you this one because this one's exciting. I just got so that. Yeah. Lights, camera, action. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, my phone, phone died. So if... The train of thought was lost. Actually, you're used to that. I find many squirrels in all my videos. So, so okay, but what we're gonna find right now is not a squirrel, but a rabbit. <laughs> See that? Dad joke. Um, so the exciting thing about our grill boxes is these cheap coolers. They're $10 at Walmart. Um, they might be a little bit more now, but I just took that corrugated pipe. I, I do have some videos that I made a year and a half ago of me making them. So if you guys enjoy this, if this video actually has viewership and thumbs up, um, I'll do a separate video on how to make them. But I just took that pipe up to the cooler, got a Sharpie and uh, drew a line and got a Sawzall and cut a hole. And then because they're corrugated, they just shoved right in here. So let me show you. Look at that. Oh, so, cute. So, so these ones are just about ready to go out into the main hutch. Like, come here. <laughs> come here, little Rambo. You see that? So in here, uh, the mommy can come down, nurse them, and, and it stays at a better temperature. So like today is actually kind of cold. Well, I mean, 65 degrees, it seems cold because it was raining. But uh, down here is gonna be warmer. In the summer, it's gonna be cooler because it's in the earth and the, the, these coolers naturally have insulation. So it, it, to me, it's brilliant. So let me show you another nest box. Say hello to Snowball. Right. 
There you go. My <laughs> word. Get down there. Don't want to smash it. Okay, so these other ones, um, actually, don't know. That one's brand new. Oh. oh they are not looking so clean. Oh, yeah, but they're... The rain today. Darn it. I hope their mama comes and cleans them. Yeah, they've been... They're growing, though. Does the rain leak on them in here? No, I don't oh. know. Oh, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> wow. Like I'm saying, for whatever reason, they may or may or may not. Come on, get down there. But that's what we want. So like, like imagine if it was a hundred degree July day and your buck is at risk of having too much heat. Well, he can simply come down here. This gives another option for him for temperature because you want to maintain his vitality, as it were, if you want to have babies. So that's a good example of that. So I think that this is a big part of the success in our colony. Okay, so now we've hyped it up. Having said that, there's, there's disadvantages and tons of mistakes that we've made, tons of them. So if you do have a colony, like right now, we have, we've tattooed all of the ears of our does, but like Beck has been saying, Nate, we gotta call the meat truck. And so the problem is that if I don't, and those get too too big we're not going to know which ones are the friars needing to go and which ones um, are, are are breeding stock and so the other thing is you don't want those young ones to grow up and to have more than one buck or you're gonna create the Wild West when we had not just when we had the two bucks down in the colony but we also had a wild doe remember that Becca mm -hmm. And Becca was the one that pointed it out because me, I'm like, I do great in chaos. I'm like, oh no, let's have rabbits, 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 rabbits. I wanted more, 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 more. But in process of doing more, that was when we started having all of the, the little babies that were getting strung out and we were losing so many of, of these baby rabbits because I think that, that this wild doe that we, we didn't identify was wreaking havoc on them and the other second buck they were fighting each other and trying to outperform each other um, so by having more we got a lot less production so with the colony here like for example we have a bad doe right now and it's harder to identify which one of those does is the bad mom so we figured it out and we separated her and we put her put her off to the side and, and she had babies and sure enough she abandoned her, her her little litter. So we're probably gonna give her one more try or we might just let her go. Um, if you had it, your rabbits in cages, you know specifically when you do or don't have a bad doe. I think professional rabbits, uh, rabbit breeders, they will allow their, their rabbits maybe one time at tops a second time and if they're not performing, they get rid of them. So that's a downside to the colony system. But all in all, I think that the colony system is great. And I do like this setup. I would, I would recommend it. If you have questions about it, please put it in the, in the comments and I'll answer you. Um, if you have any comments, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. That's the way to get this little message out. And it keeps me motivated because right now I'm super busy. So if I know you're out there, I'll keep doing videos. All right, thanks guys.